I like to try to make these videos as understandable as possible. In this video, I'll go over stellar classification. In astronomy, stellar classification is the classification of stars based on their spectral characteristics. Light from the star is analyzed by splitting it with a prism or diffraction grating into a spectrum, exhibiting the rainbow of colors interspersed with absorption lines. Basically, this should actually be spectral classification of young stars. Because the old stars, if anybody's actually read Stellar Metamorphosis, cool and die, and they move along this little graph right here. The brown dwarf cools and dies and becomes the planet somewhere down here. But the reason why it's not including in the spectral diagram, called the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, is because planets don't have spectrums. So there you go. There's a root assumption that has prevented scientists from actually understanding how a planet forms. The planet is only but the evolving star which cools and dies. Now, if you look over this, you'll notice there are, hang on, let me scroll up a little bit more. There are effective temperatures. In stellar metamorphosis, you have the young stars at the top. So you have, they're really massive, they have really big radiuses, they're really bright, and there's very few of them, okay? Now, what happens is, as a star cools, it moves down its spectrum, its conventional color description changes, gets redder, and eventually dark. Its actual apparent color gets darker. Its mass decreases from loss of mass to solar wind and flares. Its radius decreases, so you have stars wider than their uh, sun, which become sun-like, and then eventually cool and shrink to become red dwarfs, brown dwarfs, and all the way down to planets, obviously. And then you have the luminosity. Those decrease significantly, significantly as well. And as the star evolves, its luminosity diminishes to where it doesn't uh, radiate anymore. And obviously, planets don't radiate. And here's a really fun part that I noticed. If you'll scroll down this and look at this page for yourself, we have an artist's impression of a wide dwarf. Now, I'm not perfect with my the reasoning, but it's kind of eerie how our artist's impression of a wide dwarf looks very, very, very familiar to something that we have inside of our own system. Excuse it for being a little off, but there it is, Jupiter, a wide dwarf, brown dwarf star, right inside of our solar system. I thought you might find that interesting, because this is classified as a planet. So thus, if a brown dwarf looks like a planet, and a brown dwarf is the end of a star's evolution, then basically we live in a multiple star system by default, regardless of if my theory actually works out. But basically, you're looking at a star right here, a very, very old star. It's a brown dwarf right inside of our system. If any astronomers online or supposed skeptics want to ridicule you or tell you you're an idiot for supposing so, just show them that. Of course, if they don't want to look at it, like people didn't want to look through Galileo's telescope when he was showing them the moons, here's one of the moons, then that's up to them. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. But continue, continue, continuing on, I think it's good to read things like this to understand what they're trying to say but a lot of this a lot of this information that you have here it it's going to change sure we have all these interpretations but science it doesn't stay the same for long you always have different ways of looking at things for instance abnormally strong silicon okay the earth's crust is made of a lot of silicon what if the reason why the spectrum of a star shows enhanced metal features is because it's destroying an earth and ripping away its crust? So all of its crust 
is inside that solar atmosphere making abnormally strong silicon. Same with all these other elements, manganese. That's an element of the mantle. So maybe if a star has abnormally strong manganese, it means it's finished with destroying the silicon and it's working on its manganese now, which is further inside of the ancient star's core. So there you go. There's this stellar classification and it has a lot of views, surprisingly. Here, let's go to view history. I, I like to do this a lot. I like to look at this stuff. Go to page view statistics. And if you'll notice, once it pulls up, yes, 1,389 views as of December 5th. On um, December 4th, that's when I had that many views. You have all these views of stellar classification, yet why is it that I seem to be the only one that points this stuff out? I have no idea. Hopefully YouTube can help me out with that.